Another thing to do would be, um, you know, invest in tangible things like metals, though I'm all for being prepared for anything, you know, luck favors the prepared. Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Basement. Today we're pleased to have our guest, Sean Williamson, back joining us. We're gonna talk about inflation, the Fed, mortgage rates, a number of other subjects, but most importantly, we're gonna to touch on ideas for you that you can use to protect yourself during these times of economic uncertainty. You can read all about Sean's background in the description below. His credentials are impressive. Sean, how are you today? Great. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to, good to see you again. So the, the, the hot subject of the morning, uh, what will the Federal Reserve do today with interest rates? Do you have any thoughts on that subject? Uh, I mean, honestly, I kind of get tired of uh, CNBC and Bloomberg and whatever uh, hypothesizing whether there's going to be a half a point, half a percent increase or three quarters of a percent or a whole percent um, and how that's going to look and everything. It, to, to me, it's just kind of a sort of a farce, you know, mm -hmm. because we really should be working on the supply side of all this. If, if we don't want to have the economy crash and, and people's, uh, people's uh, what do they call that? their quality of life. If we don't want to have people's quality of life decline, then we need more supplies of, of everything. We don't need empty shelves and $5 gas and $6 diesel and all that. And, and those kind of play into each other that those high diesel prices are eventually going to lead to even more empty shelves than what we have. Because I watched something yesterday where some of these small trucking companies, they're working on fixed pricing and when diesel starts to get to six, seven dollars a gallon, they're losing money and there's not much they can do about it. They'll shut down or go out of business. So I kind of veered off on a tangent there. But uh, <laughs> your question was, what do I think the Fed will do with interest rates? <laughs> I don't know if it matters a whole lot. Right. You know, a half, three quarters, one percent. None of that's going to change the supply of goods we have in this country. You know, yeah, it's interesting. We went straight from the Federal Reserve to the trucking industry. But uh, since we're on that subject briefly, I thought about something and read something just a few days ago about these truckers. Number one, they're because the, the, the amount of freight being moved has decreased significantly. The rates that they're getting paid for their loads have come down like 20, 25 percent. And then they're being squeezed on the other end by these, you know, diesel prices. And like truckers are saying, "Hey, I'm done. I'm not. I'm. You know, this isn't worth it anymore. Uh, you know, we we could face a trucker shortage." Not to mention, that if you employ truckers, you're in a labor shortage to find someone to work for you. Yeah. So they're kind yeah. of getting squeezed on all sides: on the rate side, on the input side, and on the labor side. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's talk about uh, the debt levels in the country and as that relates to the Fed raising rates or higher interest rates. Um, I pulled up some stats. You asked me to look into this. I got the numbers that today, okay, total debt, total debt in the United States to GDP is 370%. In 1979, the last time we had runaway inflation and Volcker had to raise rates like crazy, total debt was 160% of GDP. That's Today's debt levels are 2.3 times higher than what we had in the late 70s. How does that play into the Fed's ability to raise rates uh, to, 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 to keep up with inflation, to beat inflation? I mean, to me, and then I want to get your thoughts on this, but to me, with with debt, total debt levels being almost two and a half times higher than they were back then, the, obviously it's going to have, you know, smaller interest rate increases, I would think, would have a much bigger impact on the economy, on the demand side of the economy. Yeah, yeah. One thing I like to ask people who, who um, worry about the Fed raising rates tremendously, I say, the government owes $30 trillion. 
where do you think they want the rates on that debt? Mm -hmm. Because the rates they have to pay are locked in with the rates that the rest of us have to pay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a no brainer. Mm -hmm. The government puts people like Yellen in place, right? Treasury secretary. I know you, you were talking about her the other day. Yeah. I have and, a video and, where, where I propose that we fire her. Sorry to interrupt. Right, exactly. Yes. And you uh, and the government also puts the Fed chair, I think, in, in place or has a say on who the Fed chair is. So they're kind of beholden to the government, which is their biggest borrower by far, the Fed mm -hmm. is. Where do you think the government wants interest rates since they owe $30 trillion? Right. As low as possible, right? As sure. low as I can possibly get away with. It's where they right. want them at all times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So What's that? Oh, go ahead. I, so I, I just don't think the rates are going to be able to be flown up really high again this time because of the debt levels, not just of the government, but you were also seeing just regular people, uh, student loan debts, credit card debts, house debts, car debts, all kinds of debts. Right. People have a lot of it and you affect them more with these interest rates than yep. you affect people who have no, no debts whatsoever. Right. Their, their, their level of disposable income is being decreased, right? Because they have a higher interest expense. And at the same time, you have an increase in prices because of inflation. I would think that could spell a drastically slowing economy. Yes. I hope that this time around, homeowners don't have a lot of a variable rate. Mortgages. And they don't. And they don't. Yeah. I read that last night that the level of mo you know, most of the mortgage debt is in fixed rate. Now, let me throw this out. I want to get your thoughts on this since we're on interest rates. I've heard several analysts say, and I've observed it myself, that uh, <laughs> the bond market has already raised rates for the Fed, right? I mean, whatever, what's their rate at right now? The Fed funds rates at 0.83, but the rate on the 10 year Treasury bond has gone from less than half of 1% all the way up to close to three and a half percent in the last right. year that, mm -hmm. that the, the bond markets already raised rates for the Fed. You know, it's forward looking, I guess, compensating for the fact that all these is. is yeah. Right. I probably have about I probably have over 100 bonds between corporates and munis mm -hmm. and they've been crushed in the last mm -hmm. year. The value of my bonds has gone down sure. significantly. Twenty percent. I'm going to say probably right on, on right. average of, of my bonds. Right. Because of the quiz of the market, you know, um, raising rates for us. Right. Right. And we thought the Fed was at peak hawkishness a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but then yesterday morning, uh, suddenly everybody decided that uh, the Fed was going to raise rates by three quarters of a percent. And I think even uh, JP Morgan uh, said that, you know, 1% is not out of the question. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And they may do that. The Fed can't create supplies, right? right. They'd like to. That just doesn't work. It's, it's the government that has to get out of the way of small business and big business and encourage small business and big business to mm -hmm. create more supply. Mm -hmm. That's where the supply comes from. It's from the, the for-profit economy. Right. That's right. who makes when, us stuff. When, when, prices are high, when, when prices are high and demand is high, like it is now, businesses are incented to produce more products. New businesses are started. Uh, you know, the pr pr in, a, in a free market economy, price fixes everything. Uh, but uh -huh. for whatever reason... In this kind of command economy in which we live in, it's apparently hard for that to occur for for this for these new businesses to come online and supply the the the, the host of different products that there appears to be a shortage of. Yeah, and, and some of this is just confidence, right? Consumer confidence is at like all time lows right now. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of small businesses are also consumers. In fact, they all are. Mm -hmm. And so when confidence is low like this, who's going to go jump out and invest tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in, into a new business, quit their job 
you know, right. take a flyer and see what happens. Right. Who's do that? Right. Right. When really yeah. it might be one of the best times ever to do it, right? If you want to invest some money into a productive asset, which I know is something you're a big proponent of. Uh, if you want to get rid of your quickly depreciating dollars and move them into something that could generate some wealth, now, ironically, might be a good time to do that. Let's touch on something that probably most of our viewers, you and me, almost everybody um, has an interest in, and that is we'll focus now just on residential real estate prices. A 30-year fixed mortgage rate, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate has increased from about 3% at the beginning of the year, January of 2022, to about 6.25% as of yesterday. What do you think that's going to do to prices on residential real estate demand? Do you have any thoughts on that subject? Well, it, clearly the amount uh, that people can make in monthly payments has uh, gone down, mm -hmm. right? Or, or at least, not that it's gone down, but the, the principal that they're able to pay for the same monthly payment yeah. has decreased when yeah. you've got rates that are doubling or whatever. Yeah, $1,500 in January bought you a $400,000 or got you a $400,000 30-year fixed loan. Today, it's probably more like $325,000. Right. Uh, right. Or if you want the 400, you're going to pay instead of paying 1500, you're going to pay 2000. Right. And I think a lot of new homeowners are always bumping up against their limit. Right. Sure. Yeah. They're, they're like, I can only afford a $300,000 house. Yeah. Or I can only afford a $1,500 payment. Boom. So now I have to buy whatever house that, that will buy me. Yeah. Right. In there's, some there's... markets, that means no house. So you're renting. Yeah. So of course it, it's classic economy, supply, demand, and price and everything. It when you have higher rates, it means lower house prices. Same thing for bonds. Higher mm -hmm. rates mean lower bond prices. It means the bonds mm -hmm. go down, houses go down. They have to eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel sorry for the people that are buying right now because I think at least around here, prices haven't really dropped yet. I think there's like this sweet mm -hmm. spot right now where um, mm -hmm. there's, there's an some, equilibrium of sorts. Yeah, like there's some pent up demand and, you know, people that have been, you know, looking for months and months and bidding on houses and now suddenly they can get a house. But man, it just feels like in a month or two or three, uh, the supply of housing could be significantly higher. Yeah, who knows if the supply will, here's the thing. So if you're sitting on a fixed rate at 3% on your mortgage and you're making yeah. that payment just fine and to move would mean going and getting a 5% loan. 6%. 6% loan, a 6% loan, right? Are yeah. you moving? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're not. We're so all stuck. That, you're stuck, exactly, you're stuck. So I'm not sure that there will be a supply, a big supply of houses on the market. Yeah. Every, yeah. Everyone with a loan is going to be stuck. Yeah. Wow. Interesting times. Well, what do we do? You know, we, we're in this kind of, of uh, uh, I guess we'll just say uncertain economic time period. What, a, what, what are some recommendations you have? I know uh, you have some ideas on what people might do some basic things. Any, any sure. ideas on that? Sure. We've spent some time scaring people, right? Sure. So yeah. let's talk about what they might do to uh, save themselves. Because <laughs> really, that's what it's all about, right? I get so tired of watching these videos on, on YouTube where it's just doom, gloom, right. buy a bomb shelter. Right. Um, and so Stack. several Uzis. Right. You know, right. There, there has to be more that we can do besides that, mm -hmm. uh, something mm -hmm. short of that, besides going full um, Mad Max. Right. You know, though I'm all for being prepared for anything, you know, luck favors right. the prepared. But uh, let, let's talk about some things that practical things that you could do. This is the real meat of the video, people. Mm -hmm. Now you can start. There you go. 
Yeah, you okay. suffered through the beginning. Now you got it. Here's here we go. <laughs> you can edit out a lot of that earlier stuff. But wait, there's okay. more. Here we go. Wait, there's more. So I, I think that you should pay off variable interest debt. Mm -hmm. Number one, get out of your credit card debt if you can. Get out of your car loan debt if you can, because you know that's owing money on a declining asset. Yeah. If you have variable uh, interest house debt, try to get out of that. Um, or just any kind of debt on that, that's floating rate, credit student. lines. If you what about student business. loan debt? I'm sorry to interrupt you. What about student loan debt? I mean, I think a lot of student loan debt is fixed, isn't it? And, think, and there's yeah. a lot of uh, an effort underfoot to forgive it, forgive right. us our sins. Right. So I don't know if I had a lot of student loan debt, I might see see what happens with that. But if it's if it's a terribly high interest rate, of course you want to get rid of that. When you're paying down debt, it always, you know, pays you to remove the highest interest rate debt first if it's mm -hmm. all fixed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would say before removing fixed rate debt, you'd want to remove variable rate debt because it's on its way up. Another thing to do would be, um, you know, invest in tangible things like metals, mm -hmm. because if the dollar does crash, at least you have something. With, with gold, silver, platinum, palladium, copper. And I would encourage your viewers to think beyond just gold and silver. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more out there that you can invest in than that. You can invest in copper via contracts or <clears throat> huge billets if you want to. You, know, right. you can invest in palladium. Platinum, I think platinum is underpriced personally relative to the other metals, just a, a tip there. Um, Let's see. Oh, and of course you can invest in brass and lead, right? Especially when they're put together in little bullets. Yeah. But uh, that's just a minor investment, just a sort of insurance policy. Productive assets, invest in productive assets. Rental properties, if, if the prices come down where it makes sense mm -hmm. to, to buy a rental property, farmland, tractors, tools, tools that make you more efficient. I would say if you're in business, you're a plumber or electrician or whatever, make sure you've gone out and bought all of the tools that you think you're going to need in the, in the next few years, mm -hmm. uh, if you can find it, mm -hmm. because who knows if you'll be able to get it in a year or two. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I just uh, talked to a farmer who lost a little cap off of his tractor or a little hydraulic cap. Yeah. And he called, he called all kinds of dealers I need one of these hydraulic caps. Nobody had one. So he ended up searching on the side of a highway with his daughter for this little hydraulic cap for I don't know how long, because uh, he didn't know where else he was going to find it to get it. Right. They did find it. Found one. <laughs> but, but still, <laughs> it just kind of goes to show what happens when sure. supply chain breaks down. Um, you could invest in things like fruit trees. Mm -hmm. uh, a garden, a raised bed garden, and learn how to grow crops. This is something that our parents, our grandparents all knew quite well, uh, yeah. how to grow gardens and fruit trees and supply some of your own food, canning food and things like that. Um, and of course, it, you can invest in stocks, corporate stocks, um, you know, the stock market. And uh, it's not, not all stocks, when I think about investing in stocks right now, I'm thinking about things that you have to buy, utilities, mm -hmm. right? Um, food, food production, food storage, healthcare, pharmaceuticals. People have to have their meds, right? They're going to find mm -hmm. some way somehow to keep buying their meds. So I would say right now, we probably want to invest in utilities and pharmaceuticals, healthcare. People are going to go to the hospital, they're gonna to go to the doctor one way or the other. There, uh, there are also some REITs and things that own residential housing, people have to live in right. those. <laughs> Warehousing REITs, uh, you know, when, when Amazon and Walmart put all these small businesses out of business for the last 40 or 50 years, that's moved a lot of space demand into the warehouse sector. You also have indoor growing, you know, facilities sure. in some of these states like uh, Colorado and Illinois, 
there's a lot of demand for indoor growing facilities. So, so, so those are some things that I think that people should invest in. Okay, so it sounds like to me you, you're 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 recommending, and it makes sense. Get your financial house in order, <laughs> number one, and then focus on becoming a little more self-sufficient and a little more efficient and maybe yeah. a little more resourceful right which yeah. is which are kind of which are which which all four of those concepts to me kind of run contrary to what i see a lot of the average americans doing the, these days right they don't they don't want to get their financial house in order they don't want to be self sufficient they don't want to be resourceful uh not everybody right but a big segment of, of the population is just you know fat dumb and happy sorry i said yeah and being overweight was a huge risk for uh, COVID mortality. Right. right. A huge risk that the government didn't want to mention to anyone. Right. Right. Kind of, kind of ironically. Right. Uh, but that's another that's another video or something. Yeah. Misinform yeah. Misinformation from the Department of Misinformation. <laughs> that's right. Don't make any investment decisions, any kind of decisions based upon anything that I or Sean said today. We're just sharing our opinions. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've I've lost a tremendous amount of money this year. If, right. if I knew exactly uh, everything to do, I would have uh, I would have sold and bought and, and managed to not lose any money. But I've lost a lot of money this year because I kind of stayed the course. Right. Uh, I read an article by Ben Stein earlier today, I think, and he said buy and buy and. Uh, Hold to your old, something like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, right, right. Just well, keep buying money. stocks and, and save them, save them, save them until you really need the money, maybe when you're older. Yeah, well, there's going to be ups and downs. And, uh, you know, you've shared a lot of great insight with us this morning. You've also given us some great ideas and recommendations on, on what people can do as we move forward. This is our second episode. Uh, we'll be back next week with more information for the viewers. Anything you want to say in closing, Sean? Or? Uh, like you said, be resourceful, be efficient, be self-sufficient. Um, the government can't take those things away from you. Uh, no one can. Your right. skills, your knowledge, your relationships. Right. And you work on all of that yeah. uh, to be stronger. Yes, wow. Thanks for joining us today, Sean, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Okay, friend? Okay, very good. All right, buddy. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.